Hello, Hello everyone, everyone. You're and you're getting, getting a, a echo. echo, and I've just fixed it. So, uh, <laughs> I have got to fix that. Hey, everyone. Um, so glad to have you here tonight. Live stream it up Fridays at 9 p.m. every time I can make it, which is almost every single time right now. But some updates on that. Also, uh, I'll just give you a disclaimer right here. If you're watching this right now or in the future, this is not... Read the description. This is not me exposing the method... It's not what this channel's about. I'm not going to do that. But if you have a question that I can answer ethically, I will be happy to answer them. There's a lot I can talk about without exposing anything, including my impressions on the effect itself now that I actually own it. And I thought we'd take some time out to, to talk about it because I think it's a very interesting product that, that deserves some attention, some conversation. So thank you all for, for being here tonight. And uh, if you guys have a question that you want to send to me directly... Uh, use the at symbol and then the magic minute and then I will it'll highlight it for me so I can see it in the chat section and I know you're trying to talk to me otherwise it's really hard to sort through hundreds of comments let's take a look and see who's here tonight we got zombie Rikyo and it and the trickster Don Alex <laughs> everybody is here tonight so thank you all so much for being here um, super cool um, Let's see. I got see if I got some. <laughs> Speaking of which, you guys liking that uh, that music intro? That's uh, that's Harris Heller. Um, you guys don't know about him. He has something called Stream Beats on it. It's on every major streaming platform, Amazon Music and all all the things, and it's music that you can use for free, uh, in your without having to worry about royalties or anything. So uh, definitely check that out. If you do any streaming yourself or do any Twitch or YouTube or anything, it's cool to use on all the platforms. Um, it's a wonderful resource that Harris has put out for us from Alpha Gaming, if you're looking for his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's already doing his, his wonderful thing where he has helped me out being the moderator of moderators and helped me out. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh... Well, someone taken my polycart. They want me to pay sixty-five dollars to have it replaced. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Brian confirmed that I'll be going on Scam Nation. Did he? Because I hadn't talked to him about that. <laughs> um, I, I've well, for a lot of you, you know that I've already been on Scam Nation. Um, Many times, I think there's about 10 episodes or so that I've done on Scam Nation. A lot of the subscribers of this YouTube channel know know me because of my appearance on Scam Nation, which is, I, I owe a lot to, to Brian about that. But I didn't know he had said anything. I'm going to have to look that up. It, Zombie, if you could uh, send me a link or kind of show me where he said that, I'd be curious to see. I've been talking with Corey a lot, Corey Cranfill, who's um, kind of uh, Brian's manager, for lack of a better term. He's kind of a does everything he's wonderful guy multi-talented and hard-working but um i've talked to him about it a little bit but i haven't we haven't set any dates in stone so <clears throat> i'd be curious to see what <clears throat> what source you have for that um let me turn off my music for this close window cool so i'm also on discord too so if you guys want to chat on discord something i'm trying to do is i'm trying to bring people in to discord bring them on the stream so that way we can do stuff like have jam sessions and everything still a little bit clunky i'm still trying to work out the best format for that but if you guys are into that or you want to, you have something you want to show off uh definitely do it the trash can that we put next to the curb to have empty someone took mine the company said that i have to pay to have it replaced like even if i was the victim that's some garbage man <laughs> oh um, no pun intended, <laughs> or maybe, maybe pun intended. That's garbage. I'm sorry. Um, oh, geez. So, uh, let's go ahead and let's jump into the meat and potatoes here of, of, of tonight's talk, which is Facade Magic Mask 2.0. Uh, if you guys are not aware of it, I, we got seven viewers right now. I imagine a lot of people clicking on this are probably curious what my thoughts are on it. If you watch this channel at all, then you know that I... Uh, do reaction videos to trailers, kind of give my first impressions based on the marketing material. Sometimes I actually buy the product and I review the product. 
and I was going to do a review on it. Maybe I still will, but I thought there, this might be a good time to field some questions that you guys have. Not everybody watches the live streams, and it might be helpful to take your most, uh, you know, burning questions and put them together and, and, and then make a video answering the questions that you guys have. So, excuse me. I want to know what you guys... Uh, I, I would like... I mean, I can just, you know, I'll just go ahead and start, and I'll just talk about some things. I have some notes. Um, talk about some things about it, and and then if you guys have any questions or want deeper clarification, and it's something that I can ethically share without revealing the method or, you know, whatever, then we'll talk about it, okay? So imagine some friend, imagine I'm a friend that you're talking to, and I'm not going to tell you the secret, but... I'll uh, I'll help you make a more informed decision about what it is, what you get, and all that kind of stuff. So, it you were totally off with your guess, my friend. <laughs> hey, hey, is Jane Lynn, which I think is actually uh, my neighbor. Is it Brian or is it Eric? <laughs> In any case, it's hi. Thanks for coming to the stream. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the. Magic Mask 2.0. I'm going to watch it. Thank you, zombie. We'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, so, here's here's what it is. Okay, so Magic Get Mask 2.0, it's no secret, is a piece of software that allows you to do some pretty amazing things uh, over a Zoom call. And it doesn't have to be just a Zoom call. It could actually be just about any teleconferencing um, software where you can use where you can export OBS as a virtual web camera, or virtual camera, which is a lot of things. Microsoft Teams. Um, I think you can do it on Skype. Don't, you know, don't don't uh, quote me on that one. Zoom, Google Hangout, any just about a face Facebook. I could do it on a YouTube live stream. Anything that you can use, where you can use uh, OBS as a virtual camera. Any other application that you can that accepts OBS as a virtual camera you can do this effect. A um, couple of other things. All right, it's Brian. Hey, Brian. So some other things uh, that I need to talk about with it is that I thought, because I use I use Streamlabs OBS, which if you're not familiar with the different flavors or know even know what OBS is or whatever that is, OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Software. And it is how I get all of my cool stuff on a live stream, my starting soons, being able to switch cameras, how to add music, how to add on-screen graphics, how to do... ...Goldsmith on the show, um, being able to pipe all that stuff in and, and do all the graphical work and audio and video work and all that kind of stuff in real time is what OBS and other applications like it allows you to do either when you're teleconferencing using a virtual camera or uh, doing a live stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, all that kind of stuff. So I use something called Streamlabs OBS. Um, it's one of the more popular amongst most people, unless you're doing like really serious work or you have a machine that's a little bit underpowered or you're trying to resor do resource management or whatever. It's prettier. It's the certainly the easier and the more graphically uh, pleasing uh, UI. Um, but uh, Facade Magic Mask 2.0 will not work with Streamlabs OBS. It will also not work with Streamyard or any of the other open bro or any of the other broadcasting softwares that you might know about. It only works with OBS, which is fine because OBS is free. It's powerful. It uh, there's nothing you really can't do on it that you can't do on any of the other platforms. In fact, it's one of the more capable broadcasting softwares. Um, there's a lot of support for it. Like if I was in the position of the people who created it, if I was in Seth Raphael's position, I would have made it for OBS as well because it runs on more systems. It's better supported and and so on and so forth. So it makes a lot of sense to be on OBS. So there's that. Uh, so that I'll, I'll make sure that you know that. So if you're married to another um, broadcasting software and you're not willing to leave it, that's going to matter for for some people. That's going to really matter for, for some people out there. 
you have to use only OBS. I wondered, because I know like Streamlabs OBS and regular OBS, there's a lot of interchangeability between the two platforms. They're very similar to each other. It really feels like Streamlabs OBS has just got a pretty skin on top of regular OBS. I mean, it really feels like that. So uh, I thought, well, it'll probably work. No, it won't. Um, I ran into a couple of issues with installing it. It was not because um, it's particularly difficult, but because I had tried to use it with Streamlabs first, and then I had to get OBS when I realized it wasn't going to work with Streamlabs, and then I had to uninstall it after I installed regular OBS, and then install Facade again to get it to work. So that's all I had to do. I didn't have to ask anybody for help or anything. It's not too difficult. Here's the other thing. If you are not familiar with the broadcasting software, this is not so difficult that you won't figure it out, but it will be a little bit more of a challenge to you to feel comfortable using it. Um, for me, again, I'm a YouTuber and I do and I do virtual shows. I do paid virtual shows. So I've been around OBS for a very long time and Streamlabs OBS, and I've been in and out and I've I know everything about the whole system backwards and forwards, and I'm very comfortable with the, with the program and the platform. And so for me, it was, you know, click a couple buttons. I knew where all the menus were and everything. Ran Pinks in the video, as well as Colin McLeod. They do a very good job of explaining how to use the software, how to do every, how to set everything up. Um, but it, I can see how it could still be pretty confusing to someone if they're fresh out the gate with this. Now, I imagine this is really designed at a $50 price tag. You know, it's not just for looky-loos. It's for somebody who's really serious about, about trying to add this to their show and are going to put the time and effort into it to, to learn how to use it. There's that. Um, so I hope, I hope that answers some of the questions that may be ahead. And if you have any other questions, please uh, send them my way. I would love to answer again, ethically, whatever question I can without revealing the method. I, I will not do that. No request for that will be tolerated. I won't, this is not what this channel is about, but if I can ethically answer a question for you, then I will. Uh, let me take a look down here at the comments and see what everybody said. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, I have my doubts after I've seen the effects he was doing with it. I'm waiting for Streamlabs to approve my account as a developer. I have an idea and I hope it's possible. Cool. Alan, you should try to start your own magic TV show, kind of like, I don't know, Scam School. You know, that's a that's a a, a great point, actually, Zombie. Because, um, thank you for thank you for mentioning that. I actually have a thought for a show, and my patrons know about this. I have a plan for a show I would like to do. Um, Brian. Uh, you know, one of the one of the secrets that he told me, I don't know if I, if I can share it or not, but he was basically like, you know, be either be the first to a platform or the best on that platform. And that, I mean, that was, that's kind of his, his general advice and it's good advice, right? Be the first to a platform or the best on that platform. Um, and the longer you wait, the harder it is going to be the first or the best, right? So how do you, how do you do that, right? So um, for Brian, he was the first one to really put out a broadcast quality program on YouTube. I mean, he, he, I mean, if you look at his episodes from even 10 or 12 years ago, you go, the production on this is incredible, right? I, even by today's standards, you just go, wow, I'm watching a TV show. You know, it's really good. Um, so... That's, I mean, he was, and he was the first to kind of do that, anything like that on YouTube as well. So he had, he kind of had both. He had the best and was one of the first to the platform. For me, I have to look at, you know, what's already been done in the YouTube landscape because, you know, Chris Ramsey's got his thing. It's a lot, a lot of puzzles are, are kind of his thing. Alex Pandre has got his thing. You've got 52 cards. You've got Xavier Spade. You've got all these people, um, you know, all these people, I could just go on and on with the list of different YouTube magicians. Jason Parker, who I, who I enjoy watching. And um, I can't forget uh, O'Brien Magic, who also does YouTube advice. Him and I, or Magic Advice, we, we, we split a little bit in two different uh, areas. He tends to go very granular on, on, on topics, and I tend to be a little bit more overarching. Um, and then just offer one-on-one -on -one advice where I can through the Discord, join the Discord. 
also mention O'Brien's uh, O'Brien's Magic Channel. I'm scheduled. I have I did an interview with him, and that's going live on his channel in a couple weeks. Make sure you go set a reminder. Go check out O'Brien Magic on YouTube. Look up you know scheduled programs and, and click the reminder so you know whenever mine goes live. Um, for um. I would really like to um, do something on YouTube that has not been done before. Uh, I think it would be really popular. I think it would be really cool. But I have to find... Here's the thing. To really give it... the, To really do it well would require um, more production space than I currently have and would require a co-host. Uh, that's not to say that this won't happen, and I'm hoping that I can make it happen. I'm very close to YouTube monetization, so I'm hoping that uh, whatever I make from YouTube monetization and all the other types of ways to monetize on the platform after not just ads, but um, tip buttons are coming soon. So people, if they really like a video or something, they can leave a little tip, and I'm sure I'm going to be adding that to my regular request in every video. Um but just that kind of stuff, if I can bring in more revenue, then I can, more patrons, then I can look at doing stuff like renting a studio space or paying a co-host to be on the show or um, for the higher level of production, you're going to need all the set design and all that kind of stuff. But I have a plan for something I would really like to do. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spill the beans yet, but uh, I, it's, I've, I've been thinking about it a lot. So maybe it would be cool. And thank you for saying so. Um, or, you know, and, and, and encouraging me to do that. In fact, I have some ideas of things I'd like to do with Brian Brushwood, too, honestly. And that's something that uh, I'm going to talk about with him the next time I go down to see him. So it's all stuff. It's all stuff. And we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Um, if you guys have any other questions about um, Facade Magic Mask 2.0, I would really like to answer them for you. Um, I can tell you that it is... Not what I thought it was. It it wasn't. I mean, I it's it's apparent in the marketing material and everything that it's. I don't. I'm not spilling the beans on it being a piece of software. They talk about it right in the trailer. They talk about it on the marketing page everywhere. It's a piece of software. Um, it's a very lean piece of software. So it's not really. You don't have to worry if you're running a you know a potato. It's really not going to drag down your system very much. Um, and uh, what else can I say about it? It is a lot more versatile than I thought it would be. A lot more versatile. It's simpler. It's actually simpler uh, technology than I would have thought. Uh, I thought I was thinking it was something totally different. Um, still knowing it was a piece of technology and it interacted with OBS and all that kind of stuff. But what I was thinking it was um, like a tracking software. You know, that's what my thought was. And if you go back and watch my reaction video, I say, well, I have an idea, but I won't say. Um, I thought that it was uh, that you would mark tracking dots and then your, your camera was going to track and then overlay um, a, a writing or design on there. And it would actually just be digital ink, but appear like it was actually mapped to your hand. That's not what this is. That's not what this is, not even close. And I'm actually glad it isn't because what it actually is is a lot more versatile than that. It's a lot simpler, a lot more reliable, and um, has more applications. So it's actually it's, it's better than I thought. Um, I am a huge fan of it. I'll tell you, it will take practice, though. This is not just, you know, one size, or it's not like you, you buy it and then you suddenly, I mean, this is one that really will take a lot of practice and will take a lot of, you have to be skilled in front of a camera. You have to be skilled in front of a camera and use the software. For me, it's an absolutely perfect effect. It is, it is something that I will use, and I will use a lot, and I will use it comfortably, and I will use it happily um, for a very long time. Not for, not for everyone, though. It, there are some people who will get this and go, you know, this is a little bit over my technical comfort level, or I don't see myself using this, or I don't do nearly enough Zoom shows to do this, and, and all that kind of stuff. We had a comment on the original video from a colleague of mine, um, the incomparable Landon Stark, who I'm a huge fan of, and love and support, and um, think he's just, just think he's just wonderful. 
Um, he said that he got it and he was not, it was not going to go into a show. And fair enough, right? It, it won't, it will not be for everyone. Um, I have a different perspective. I have the perspective of being a YouTube creator, magician who uses this kind of software every day, all day for years. I have a different perspective than the common, uh, common magician who, who has never touched OBS. So definitely, definitely take uh, take, take it under advisement that uh, it may or may not be for you. Um, I, I hope that I can help answer some questions about it. That'll give you uh, some stuff. Uh, co-host idea, Alex Rangel. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, I I know him. He's over in um out, down in Houston, or uh, well, not Houston. He's actually in a uh, uh, Kima area. He's got a shop out there. Um, funny story about him. He actually gave me a deck of, uh, cards on my honeymoon. So I, I saw him down there. Um, NLG Paradox. Hello everyone. 5.30 AM in Greece. Whew. What are you doing up so early? <laughs> Thanks for being here. My gosh. I would not want to hear my own voice at 5.30 in the morning. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah. So long, long answer short. I like the effect. I will use the effect, but I can see where where there are some people who just just won't use this, and I understand. Um, I want to also here take a take a moment to interject that I don't think that with a lot of virtual program. Here's the thing: everybody thinks yes, the country's starting to open back up. Vaccines are going out. They're getting in people's arms. Economies are opening, mask mandates are being lifted, whether, however you fall on that category, or that is, you know, not, not, uh, not part of the discussion. But there is a general sense that, that um, by, by the end of the summertime, rolling into the fall, we're going to be meeting in person again a lot. That this is going to be a, much, a lot more relaxed place. Which, I hope so, and I hope, I hope that everything goes well and that everybody stays healthy and that, and that, that we, we, we survived it. We kicked its butt. It's out of here. Bye-bye. Peace. You know, deuces. Or that'd be live long and prosper. How about this one? This is the Vulcan fail and die. Yeah. We want to get rid of, <laughs> I don't want this around anymore. I don't think anybody does. So yeah. So people have this whole thing. Oh, well, I just have all this virtual magic. That's just going to go to waste. Why would I want to invest in virtual magic right now? Whenever, um, you know, in this, by the summertime, everybody's going to be meeting in person again. I need you to think about this a different way, please. This is, again, this is professional hat, Alan talking. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the official top hat. I'm talking as a professional magician who, who works as a professional, like that's, that's how I make a living hundred percent. What do I think about virtual magic moving forward? Um, I think the cat's out of the bag. I don't think you will ever have an, uh, an, I don't think you'll ever get rid of virtual magic. I think it will always be around now. And I think there's a couple reasons for this. People, everybody has gotten so comfortable to Zoom and using teleconferencing software, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, what have you, that that was the big barrier before. That was the big barrier. That was the reason that whenever I used to try to do sales calls with people, I would actually have to physically go into their visit their location and then meet with their team, you know, to try to close a sale. Um, not anymore. Now everybody's going to hop on a Zoom call because it's a lot more convenient. They're not going to all meet in person, right? Um, I'm talking with a group right now. Hopefully this this happens. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx it or or um, count my chickens before they hatch. But I'm talking with somebody about doing an event uh, in in Washington D.C. Um, in June. And they're going to do it as a hybrid event where they're going to do some of the stuff. Some people can uh, you know, appear in person and other, and other people are going to have to attend the conference virtually. And they want to make sure that they are providing excellent value and content for for the admission price of their conference to everybody. So they're looking at doing a hybrid thing, which I would have to do both virtual magic and live entertainment in person. So these kinds of things. Um, sales meetings are going to be massive. Can you imagine you're trying to book a corporate show here and they're like, well, yeah, but the team wanted to meet with you. Do you mind? Which is something that happens all the time. 
Happens all the time. If you're going to charge a lot of money for a show, there are going to be a couple people who are going to want to meet you, especially if they are all making a decision together. They're going to want to meet you. So that's when you go in and you kind of show them who you are and you show them you're the right person for the job and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that happens a lot. That's going to happen over Zoom now. It was already happening over Zoom before whenever I met like a company that had, they were, you know, had the technological foot forward, but it's going to be a lot more commonplace as we move into the future. Can you imagine doing this kind of stuff in a virtual call for them? Uh, you can still, you can perform magic, really strong, very powerful magic in a virtual setting uh, for a sales meeting. My goodness. Think about this. You got, you got. Let's say you have facade magic mask, and this is how I'm going to use it. Okay, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna use it. Uh, you know, hey, so and so, Mr. Company, yes, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Company, I would love to work with with you guys. I'll tell you what, you know everything about me now. I'm gonna write a number down. Okay. I want you to, I want you to think of any three digit number. Got it? Great. If I got your number right, I'll assume I got the job, and I'll send over the paperwork. Okay? 789? 789, right? There you go. I mean, like, right? Sold. You're hired, right? I mean, like, good Lord. Um, So this uh, virtual magic will have applications outside or or past, post-COVID, okay? And... I think that is, I think it's narrow minded and, and, um, short sighted to think that, that we're not going to have applications and uses for this into the future. So I would argue that if you are, have been hesitating on getting some kind of virtual thing or something, you might want to rethink that. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I want to make sure I'm looking at all your guys questions too. Uh, I should do a Q&A with Henry Harrius. Maybe I will. Listen up, people. Man speaks fats. I'm I'm spitting bars. Yo. I'm not cool. <laughs> Be the best in your own category you invented. That's what Brian always says. That's true. It's true. Um... Skelly says, uh, I don't know if you saw my old message, but do you ever dream of opening your own magic performance place like where magicians can come and do magic? Um, not really, no. And the reason is, is because, you know, like 50% of restaurants and bars fail in the first year and the rest fail in five years. At restaurants and bars and venues like that are not my not my thing. Now, what I would rather do is I would like to have, and I've tried to do this, is I've tried to work with, and I have been successful in the past, with working with restaurants to provide entertainment to their guests, either doing walk-around magic or performing like a show, like a dinner theater show, and doing that, and just having a good working relationship with an already existing venue. Um, where I could do either variety acts and bring different people in, or it could be just me or whatever. But no, I don't have any interest in, in, in owning a magic shop. I don't have any interest in having a venue um, for magic. I really don't... It's not my thing. I, I don't want to be a venue owner. So that's my answer. Um, and it looks like Corey Cranfield's here. Hi, Corey. Nice to see you. It's wonderful. I was just saying nice stuff about you earlier. You can go back and rewind and watch it. I... Love, love that guy. Love you, Corey. Um, at the Magic Minute, are you doing any ITR magic? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, I, I honestly, I prefer static line a lot of the time. I, I, some, some ITR, but I, I prefer static line or, or elastic. Though that's really my, my thing. Elastic is really where it's at. <laughs> I'll spit some bars someday, okay? I just gotta find something. I gotta, I gotta write a little magic grab or something. Um, yeah, I prefer, I, I prefer elastics. Um, if we're talking about I, um, it, not, not it, mind you, but uh, the other it. I think elastics are where it's at. I mean, you can, for, for the 
built for the setup, for the convenience, for the reliability, for the ease of carry, for the effects that you can create. Elastics are my thing, and I can also make I make them myself at home. Um, so for very cheaply, very cheaply. So I that's that's where my heart is at. And if I'm not doing that, I'm using static line almost all the time. I very rarely use uh, use uh, ITRs. Uh, at the Magic Minute, do you know the utility by Spider Hand and Phantom Hand? I feel like I'm being set up for a joke right now. Like, Phantom Hand, isn't that where you sit on your hand? I'm, I can't say that on a YouTube stream. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, man. No, I don't I don't know what those are in LG. I'm sorry. Corey is great. Corey is great. Um... Uh, so yes, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with everything. I I really am loving and enjoying Facade Magic Mask 2.0. I think it is as close to a perfect product as I've ever seen. I think it is entirely justified in the price. Um, they didn't do some kind of stupid bullcrap thing where you you can only use it on your device five times or install it five times and then you run out of a product key or some stupid thing like that. It's you buy the software. It's your software, runs uh, as a DMG or an executable, and then it's there. It's on your computer. It exists forever, and it is out of the way. It's not very resource heavy at all, and will allow you to create miracles. And your really your imagination is the only limiting factor. Really, it is so so good. I am giddy. I've played with it uh, for hours in the last two days. And I also need to mention here, this is where I need to thank uh, my friend Joe, uh, because this was an investment that he made in me. He said, you know what? I, I'm on a, I'm an extreme budget right now. Uh, you guys probably know I'm not back at work yet, but I'm working on getting back to work. So uh, every dollar that I spend is, um, is very carefully calculated. And he goes, you know what? I think that, uh, I'm curious about this. And I think that, uh, you know what, if, you know, you you buy it. You can tell me if it runs on my if it'll run on my machine and you know whatever else. I'll 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 buy I'll buy it for you, and uh, you just pay me back later. And I said with interest. And I said okay okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use that to to close some shows. I'm or to to close some deals. I'm sure, and that thing will pay for itself. Um, you know, a thousandfold over time. I kind of was on fool us. Um, I was planning on I was planning on uh, auditioning, so I was kind of on there a couple of years ago. I had a little, a little cameo appearance in the bumper for my friend, my friend uh, Trig Watson. Uh, he is um, a redheaded magician, incredibly inventive and full of life and energy, and just a, a very good friend of mine. Um, he works. He actually works on um, uh, magic for humans. He's a he's a creative consultant on that show, and uh, he used to live here in Dallas and would hang out. But he's moved out out west to to work on the show. Um, uh, whenever he was on Penn and Teller, I helped him with some of the effects on that video, and we I was in the bumper. I had to sign a release, and I met with the producer and some other things, and I was able to do that virtually. Um, so, uh, so I, I I my face appears on on camera for like a split second on Penn and Teller and then I had a much larger longer thing on Masters of Illusion where I did a full on illusion with him uh, with again with Trig him and I worked on this uh, effect and filmed it and uh, you know sent it over to them and they liked it so we did it and I was on an iPad tablet and uh, we were interacting through the screen which is, seems very interesting you know kind of prescient you know, now with, with, with what's happened with COVID. So I uh, had a much longer credited appearance on, on Masters of Illusion. Uh, I was going to try out for Penn and & Teller and do, I was going to do a mentalism effect thing. And then, but this was all at the same time that my daughter was, you know, going to be born or was just born. And I, I kind of just missed my window. And that's okay. I mean, that happens. I don't know that, uh, maybe, maybe I'll try again at some point. I just, I don't know what it would accomplish for me. I don't really enjoy the 
the recognition or notoriety in that in that way. I, it's, it's I'm already uncomfortable enough in my own. I don't want to say uncomfortable because it's flattering. Uh, you know, I live here in in North Texas, and I've been working in this area for 10, 12 years, something like that. And people recognize me. Oh, somebody will run into me at a grocery store that I haven't seen. I did a show, you know, like eight years ago or something, and somebody was in that audience of 300 people, and they're like. Hey, you're you're uh, you're the magi- you're Alan, right? You're the magician guy, right? And of course, you don't you can't possibly remember them because you can't remember every face and name of an audience of three hundred people uh, for a show you did eight years ago, um, and you feel bad <laughs> because they they know who you are, but you're like, yeah, hi. So it's ar- that's already uncomfortable for me. I've been out with with my family, and and people want to stop and talk with me and that kind of stuff, or. Oh, can we take a picture? I want to show my wife that we uh, we hung out. Or, um, and that's starting to happen with the YouTube channel too. I, I did a show at a church last year, and um, uh, uh, there was somebody there who was like, I, he was like, I wasn't going to come to this, and my wife said that the magician who was coming was Alan Paletti, and I had seen you on Scam Nation just before that, and went to subscribe to your channel, and I couldn't believe that it was you, and I just had to come. So, like, I mean, it's cool, and it's very flattering, but it's also, like, if I'm on national television any amount of t- times, like, I don't, I don't want to get stopped and ask questions about what it was like to be on the show and stuff. Like, it's not my, not my bag. So, I kind of avoid, kind of avoid that. I hope that answers your question. I don't know. It was a very long-winded answer, but I hope that answers it. I'm not sure that I want that. I'm willing to do appearances. I've done. I've done some public. I've been in some publications recently, especially in relation to again COVID and its effect on on uh, different entertainers and stuff. I was in D Magazine last year, um, where I talked about my experience as a as a professional entertainer and you know where my job was at that point. Um, some news channel stuff. Some very very small stuff. You know, but I'm okay with that and using that as marketing material. Um, as long as that all is, so I can kind of increase my my image in the minds of, of potential clients, and that's that's fine. That's what it's for. You also can use celebrity by association by posing with celebrities you met at a show. So I've got pictures of me and Meatloaf when I met him, um, you know, and that kind of stuff. Because yeah, it helps. It helps to go. Oh, this guy's uh, he's he's in the happening places. He knows the people. And it's good, right? It's good to show people that because they don't know. Um, they only know what you sh- what you show them. So. Yeah, sometimes I take those photo ops and opportunities and we'll go on programs and on the radio or something. Well, I'm trying to get on the radio for something soon. But anyway, yeah, that stuff is... It's end goal is just to get more people to hear about me. But not so many people that... I don't want to be a household name. Not my thing. NLG product or um, NLG paradox says, "Do you buy any magic products now and then, or not anymore?" I very rarely will buy magic products. Here's the thing, uh, you know, this is such a tough answer because I mean it's, it's actually extremely simple. Professional magicians don't often buy and that's not everybody that's not a blanket statement i know a lot of i know a lot of professional magician friends of mine who who do continue to to buy magic and some people buy a lot of it i am of the camp that i rather work on the things that i already have and get really good at them so i do them better than anyone else and so i don't often buy new magic i buy new magic whenever i, I see a hole in my show somewhere that needs filled right so like if it's like you know it could be 10 seconds where like where this effect will act as a great segue from one effect to another or it could be it where just fits that spot exactly and it's like it will just be better it'll add more punch or more uh rhythm to the to the show it might be that the version that I'm doing right now I'm dissatisfied with and there's problems with it and then somebody comes out with a version that solves all the major problems that I had with the original. It might be worth going ahead and taking a look at that. But really where I tend to spend most of my money um, towards magic is on further education. 
uh, when I'm talking about the fun stuff, if I'm talking about like the business, there's a whole other side of that, uh, business insurance and, um, you know, CRMs and all that kind of stuff, but a whole, whole, whole other ball of wax, whole other ball of wax. If you guys want to hear about that, become a patron and you can ask me all the questions you want to about that side of the business. But as far as magic and learning new effects, and I, I tend to invest most of my money into books and into that kind of stuff. I don't really get much out of buying single-use effects unless it's something so useful and so good like again again i didn't buy it or at least not yet i'm i'm it's on borrowed money right now but got um facade magic mass 2.0 it's it fills a it fills a need in my show right it fills a need it's it's the final cream to, you know cream of the crop perfect impossible mentalism effect it's there's no beating it, right? It's it's excellent, and it fits. A, it has a very good fit in my existing show, so yeah, that makes sense. Um, another one was the Picasso Pro app, right? I spent a lot of money this past year on virtual magic because, well, I had to create a virtual show, so there, you know, there's some stuff that I could just carry over from from live entertain or live magic that was okay, and some stuff I developed and on my own and everything, but. Um, yeah, there were some things where I was like, I can, I want to boost the interactivity, or I think that this is valuable to, to, to do it this way, or I think that this fills a need in the, in the show that I'm trying to create, and yeah, so I spent more more money on magic in the past year than I have in the previous five years, probably. Just not, not my thing, right? So, um, if you want to, if you want to know a really good wallet that I enjoy a lot is is the. Um, the Brent Braun wallet. I did a, a the FPS wallet. I've been meaning to do like a like a six months later video or something on that because I, I reviewed that quite a while ago, and it's been my my everyday carry wallet, and it's great. <laughs> I love it. I love knowing that I have that secret weapon in my pocket at any time, and it's really really it's really good, and it's wearing very well. It's not it's not falling apart. Doesn't feel cheap. Doesn't the threads aren't popping. The leather isn't wearing out. It's a high quality wallet. It's a very nice wallet, and I mean, it looks as new today as the day I got it. So that's one I like a lot. Um, I got a question from Zombie. Uh, have you heard of Scott? Is it Humston? Humston. I wasn't sure if that was Hernston. R and the M real or R and the N really close together, looking like a, like a Humston. No, I I don't know of Scott Humston. I guess it's somebody I'll have to look up. Well, uh, beautiful people, I'm just about at the end of my stream tonight. Hope that you guys had fun and you found it informative. And I'll, uh, yeah, I think I think we'll probably we'll probably close it down right now. I hope I hope you had fun. I know I did, and hopefully we'll be having some more stuff in the future. If you haven't joined the Discord, please. If you like this this video, please give it a thumbs up. It help it does help with the algorithm a lot. Um, all the things, you know, the YouTube stuff, you know, all the stuff. Also follow me on Twitch. I'm, I'm trying, trying to stream more on Twitch. I have sucked at doing that lately, but I'm trying to get better. So if you guys are into video games, you're into magicians, uh, best of both words, worlds, you can check out my, uh, my Twitch stream and join the discord. Cause you'll find out whenever I'm doing something random or weird, or you can ask me more questions there. It, you are a king. Thank you so much for, for being an excellent moderator. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you really, really soon. All right. Bye. <laughs>